Hi, I'm Felia Stein and I'm the Safari expert and welcome to this first episode of Out and About and today I'm talking with an expert Safari guide, Chad Cocking. Chad, thanks so much for joining. Cheers, Villiers. Thanks very much for uh, having me, at least if it's uh, over internet rather than in person. At least we can uh, make this connection. Yeah, I'm stuck in the office. It looks like you're a little bit better off in that, on that side. I should be calling this in and about. Uh, but yeah, it looks like you guys are, are enjoying the lockdown there at, uh, you know, in the Timbavati. Yeah, I'm not going to complain. Uh, it makes a big, big difference having access to a 53,000 hectare back garden with no one else around so although we're obviously very cognizant of the lockdown rules and that that our president has put in place we have uh, no one else here so we're able to go out and explore this uh, beautiful area well the best i can do for us chad is to magically get some bird song to appear in the background so i'll just do that by clicking my finger like that oh listen orange breasted bush strike in the background um, Chad, uh, the whole idea with Out and About is obviously to talk to other safari experts and you're an expert guide. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got into guiding and how long you've been doing it for. Um, sure, this was probably one of the longest gap years of anybody's life. I came here in 2007 after having studied a BSc in environmental management, been studying for five years and I just thought I wanted a break. Why not uh, come and live out my childhood dream, become a guide for a, a year, go back, do my master's and carry on with real life. And yeah, we're now 2020 and I'm still uh, still here. So that's how I ended up in this industry and haven't regretted it for a day. And where is here at the moment for you, Chad? Uh, I'm based at uh, Tundatula Safari Camp, which is situated in the Timbavati Private Nature Reserve, which is one of the private reserves on the western border of the Kruger National Park. So part of a... 30,000 square kilometer open system. And it's uh, yeah, been my home for 13 years now. Yeah, I saw that you guys are actually doing some, you call them the so Sofa Safaris on the Tandatula YouTube page. I'll put the link in the description below and on, you know, just below our beautiful faces here as well. What, what are the Sofa Safaris all about? Well, yeah, obviously with this whole uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, spreading across the world and, um, people that had planned to travel to South Africa or all across Africa had their travel plans uh, pulled up from underneath their feet. Everything got canceled. And we were basically sitting here for a 21 day lockdown uh, as the whole country is facing. And we were just trying to think of what we could do to keep our social media presence uh, alive. And we've got a couple of photographers and videographers in the camera. We thought, why don't we just go out there on a daily basis um, and go film what we film. Uh, try to do these virtual kind of game drives. It's not quite the, the live safaris that um, Safari Live is able to produce, but we're able to, on an almost daily basis, give people a 20 minute, half an hour video clip of what we're going out and seeing. And the response has been absolutely incredible. Um, it's for many people, these snippets into the outside world are the highlight of their days. And um, yeah, we've just decided to, to run with it and uh, gives us something at the lodge to do as well. Absolutely. Really, really enjoying it because we missed that best interaction. Yeah, exactly. I must exactly. be honest, I've been watching it as well and I love it because it's little highlight packages. You know, you can sit for 15 to 20 minutes and just see what you guys saw. And remember, yeah. um, you know, people like myself, us safari guides or, or photographic guides, we can't go out either. So we, we need our fix as well. So um, I'm so glad you guys are doing it. And, and I really do urge everyone to, to go and check that out. Um, and then tell me, um, Tandatula itself, um, I know you've only been there for about a year or so. What makes it special? You know, what, what, why would you say to someone that comes to South Africa that they should come to, to the Timbavati and Tandatula specifically? Um, well, first is the location. In the Timbavati as a private nature reserve uh, that is less commercialized than some of the other more well-known reserves. Uh, it has got a, a wilder feeling about it. And sitting in the middle of that is this uh, beautiful tented camp. Now, normally when people think of tents, they're imagining these small little dome tents that you cramp for space. Uh, Tandatula Safari Camp is nothing like that. This is uh, glamping, big luxury tents. Uh, plenty of space, um, proper bathrooms, showers, running water, um, big bathtubs. And by coming doing a safari in a tent, you're just a lot more connected to the bush. Uh, rather than being uh, cut off by walls and the sound of air conditioner, when you go to bed at night, you can hear the whooping hyenas, the distant calls of lions, the meowers feeding outside your tent. And it really just brings people closer to the bush. 
Um, and then the other thing that I think sets us apart and makes us really stand out is the people side, uh, a very family feeling about the camp and a lot of the staff have been here for decades and there's just a real genuine spirit and, and, and friendly atmosphere. It's, it's friendly without being complacent and it just creates a very special environment for which people can come, relax, unwind and uh, reconnect with nature. Having followed you on social media for a long time, you personally seem to have a massive following um, on social media and on Facebook and so on. Um, and I think that obviously helps a lot. You, you must have a lot of people that come back to go on safari with you specifically. Yeah, I've got a few very, very faithful uh, friends now. I won't even call them guests. I mean, I've been traveling, they've been traveling with me in my company for many years now. I've even taken some of them to East Africa on trips there. And it's great. And they've all just, as soon as I left the previous lodge, they're like, yeah, we're following you there. And it's, that's been great. And great to show them something different. Uh, as much as they love the old lodge, they have completely fallen for Tundatula. Um, and it's, yeah, you realize the power of social media when you're able to get people that you've never met, never thought you would have met suddenly coming on safari and say, yeah, we've, we've been watching your photos. We've been seeing you for years. Absolutely. Great. And before I forget, what are the, what are the um, social media handles that people can follow you on specifically? Um, I've got Instagram, which is just uh, Chad Cocking, one word. Um, and my most active Facebook profile is Chad Cocking Wildlife Photography. Brilliant. Well, I'll make sure to link through to those as well. And speaking of which, of all the photographs, um, it's certainly one thing that when I, when I scroll through Facebook, it's like your photos just jump out. There's something about them that, I don't know, they seem to be more colorful, have a greater depth of field, um, just super composition. Um, and I'm, I'm going to replace my face with some of those photographs now, if you don't mind. But what's your secret? Like, why, how does almost every single one of your photographs seem to come out um, just so uh, eye-catching? Uh, I'm going to give credit to the saturation slider. No, no. <laughs> I, uh, I take many, many, many uh, hundreds of photos before I find one that I think is worth sharing on social media. I'm much more selective now um, after so many years of doing it than I used to be in the beginning. And, yeah, so, um, so it's a very careful selection of what you share with, your, with, with, with the people. Yeah, um, trust me, there are many, many bad, bland photos that go nowhere other than the recycled bin. Uh, and it took me a long time to realize that. Uh, and you just look at people like um, Craig DeToy, for instance, he's just one that springs to mind, Ross Cooper. They're also taking thousands of photos, but they reserve their best for those social media platforms. So they post less frequently, but when they do, it's, 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 it's yeah. gold. For sure. And um, what, what equipment do you shoot with at the moment, Chad? I know I've asked you this before, but I always forget. <laughs> I'm a, a Canon man, and I, I'll be honest, I'm not very into equipment. Uh, the best camera that one can have is the one that's in their hand at that time. So yep. my bodies, I've got a 5D Mark IVs, and then the one's got a 500mm f4 lens, and the other's a 70 to 200 uh, f2.8. So those are my yeah. primary lenses. I've got a macro lens. I've got a couple of wide-angle lenses as well that come out from time to time. But yeah, my primary lens that I photograph with, and that most, well, probably 90, 95% of my images posted online, comes from my 500mm. Uh, Brilliant. And um, to put you on the spot just a little bit, is there a specific photo that you've taken over the years as a guide that really stands out that you would say is your favorite photograph? Oh, you're not going to get any prizes for guessing this one. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's definitely the most standout photo. And you're yeah. probably all looking at it now. The, uh, the white and tawny line drinking next to each other. Um, and I... <laughs> Is it that one? <laughs> surprise, well, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about that photo, Chad, because I'm sure a lot of people would have seen it on social media, but maybe they don't really know the story behind it. Yeah, um, that was, sure. The, the Timbavati in general has probably been over the years most well known for its, uh, um, the odd occurrence of white lions. Now, these are not albinos. It's just lions that uh, carry a recessive gene that seems to be far more prevalent in this area than other places at the moment. Presently, there's only three known wild white lions in the world roaming around, one in Kruger and two, oh, I guess, still in Kruger on the, and beyond the Gala concession. Yeah. But anyway, back in 2000 and 
10, uh, we had a pride with uh, two white sisters that were living within our concession. And I was actually visiting on holiday. This was during the year that I was doing my master's degree. The lions had had a giraffe kill that walked three kilometers to a water hole and stopped 100 meters short. So we went in the afternoon with the plan of getting the pride coming to drink and they just slept through. So that, oh well, opportunity missed. The next morning they were still sleeping in the same location. So I said to my friend, we've got to get there at sunset because they're going to wake up and go and drink. And as we pulled up to the water hole, uh, without even, we stopped to look at a hyena and literally a minute later, the tawny and uh, white lion popped up over the dam wall and they went and they lay side by side having a drink. We didn't even have to reposition our car. Yeah, just picked up my camera, clicked away. And my friend that was uh, guiding me said, Chad, I'd love a copy of those photos when you're done. And I very arrogantly said, don't worry, you're going to be seeing these in magazines all over the world. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I just knew what a rare sighting it was. Uh, and just they, they did all the work. They were just so symmetrical, tongues out together. It was one of the only times I've clicked a photo known that I'd really captured something it's a sort of It's the sort of photographs that does as wildlife photographers. We dream about, you know, you, yeah, you exactly. fantasize about it when you drive around, but uh, to actually have it happening and getting all the settings right and the symmetry and all that sort of stuff, it's, uh, yeah. it's almost a life-changing moment. <laughs> um, Chad, and then just lastly, what's your, what's your feeling with this whole, I don't really want to go on too much about the coronavirus, but um, obviously it's impacting all of us in the safari industry quite um, drastically. What do you think is going to happen over the next few months? Do you guys um, think, you know, we obviously set to, to finish lockdown in South Africa end of next week. We may obviously be locked down a little bit longer, but it's going to take a while for guests to come back. So um, do you think your sofa safaris might be something or this sort of uh, uh, safaris without guests is something that might go on a little bit longer? Uh, yeah, we've been discussing that and it's, you know, as long as we don't have guests, we're going to be out there bringing this to them so that when the travel bans are lifted, when people are confident enough to travel again, they're going to have this yearning to actually come Brilliant. to Africa, come to South Africa, and hopefully come visit us here at Sundatula and experience in person what they've been seeing on, uh, on the internet. Um, you know, it is, this is going to pass. Uh, how long it's going to take, we don't know, but we just... Uh, are making sure that at Tundatulu, we are ready, that once everything uh, is good to go, so are we. And the guests are welcome to come join us and uh, we will uh, carry on, maybe not quite as it used to be, but uh, as best we can. But until such a time, yeah, please make sure you sit and enjoy our sofa safaris, send us requests, send us questions, and uh, let's see how interactive we can get with this thing. Brilliant. Well, Chad, it's amazing that you guys are doing it. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time to chat to me. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing those little leopard cubs and hopefully the cheetahs again and all the things that you guys have been seeing on the sofa safaris. And um, yeah, just enjoy the photography and good luck with the rest of the lockdown. Cheers, Villiers. I really appreciate you giving me the time to sit and chat to you. And uh, yeah, uh, best wishes to you and your family that side. Uh, yeah, only a couple more weeks. Uh, so stay positive and uh, we'll catch you on the other side. Big pleasure. Well, guys, I hope you all enjoyed that. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Also check out some of the other videos and I'll keep on doing the out and about section and hopefully in the future, I'll be able to actually go out and about when I interview people in the bush itself. But for now, we're going to be stuck right here in the office. <laughs>